Hi guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail and welcome to our Chain Mail Tutorial channel. Hey guys, welcome back to those that have visited us before and a great hi how are you to those that are new to our channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a demonstration of a request it's for the one hour less sleep weave. All right, so let's just get straight into it, guys. Okay, so I've got a few sample pieces today to show you of this weave. So as I said, it's called one hour less sleep and it belongs to the Persian family. So this is what the weave looks like in 14 gauge AWG. Uh, which is 1.6 millimeter diameter wire and these ones are 3 eighths of an inch or 9.53 millimeter ID. Now there are actually two versions of this weave. So this is the standard weave, the normal one hour less sleep. And you can also do, there's also a version with these orbiting rings which uh, give the weave completely different look as you can see. Now I found it best to use a slightly bigger ring to do the orbiting version. It was just easier. You could generally use this size ring and get maybe one orbiting ring in. I found it unbelievably frustrating to try and get that second one in and still use the same size. So what I would suggest is if you want to use the orbiting rings to go up about 0.5 of a mil in ring ID. So this one, as I said, is a 9.5. If you want to do orbiting rings, I would suggest using a ring ID of 10 mils. Okay, this here is 16 version, 16 gauge version, which is 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. And the ring ID for the basic weave is 9 30 seconds of an inch or 7.14 millimeters. So to create the one with the orbiting rings, I actually used 7.5 millimeter ID. So as you can see, it does give it a really, really different look. Okay, so here's the 18 gauge AWG version or one millimeter diameter wire. So the normal standard weave was done in 5.75 millimeter ID rings and the orbiting ones was 6.25 millimeter ID. So again, going up 0.5 of a mil um, in the internal diameter for the size. Now with the 20 gauge version, I've only got uh, the standard size, which I used 4.5 millimeter ID rings for. If I was going to do the orbiting version of this one, then I would use rings with an ID of five mils. So today I'm just going to show you the normal one using the 14 gauge rings, which is the three eighths of an inch or 9.53 millimeters. Okay, so to start with, you want to close um, two of your color one ring, which is the main color. In this case, I'm using bright aluminium as my color one. So I'm going to close two of those and then I'm going to feed a twist tie through them. Okay, just so we've got a little bit of a handle there, makes it a bit easier to hang on to. And then through here, I'm going to feed four rings and I'm going to feed them in the pattern of one color one, which is our BA. And then I'm going to do two color two rings. And of course you can change this to create different patterns, but this is just uh, to replicate the piece that I showed you. So two color two rings. And then finally, one more color one ring. Okay. So we've got four rings on there now, color one, two color twos, and another color one. All right, so in our next step, going to take up a color one ring. 
and we're going to feed that through just our color one rings okay so we're going to skip those color two we're going to push them aside we're just going to go through the bottom color one and then the top one so that our work looks like that you can see that it's pushed those green rings away i'm going to close that ring up and we're going to feed another ring through the same path okay so just through the bright aluminium rings as it were okay and our work looks like this so what we're going to do now is we're going to take up our color two ring our anodized rings and we're going to feed one of those through that last pair of color one we're going to close that up and we're going to repeat with a second ring so that we've now got two color two rings in our chain. Okay. Now this is where things start to get a little tricky. We want to actually now move these two colored rings so that they sit between the color one rings there. Okay, so that they look similar to this pair over here. So we want to nestle them in in between them there okay and what we want to do is we want to look for this eye that's formed here where our rings are overlapping let me put that down so it doesn't look like I'm poking you in the eye so we're going to feed that through there and we're looking for this eye that's created where our rings overlap okay so what we want to do now is take up color one ring and making sure that we've got all our rings in place that is our color two rings nestled inside the color one rings we want to feed our new ring all the way through those four rings there can you see that so it goes straight through that eye and it picks up all four of those rings okay and then we want to flip our ring backwards okay and it goes through the middle of our first pair of color two rings okay so straight through the middle of those there like that and close that ring up Okay, so our work looks like that. And we want to do the same on the other side. So I'm just going to open up a new ring. And this one's going to be a little bit easier because our rings are already held in place. But we want to go through those four, through the eye that's formed by those four rings. So we go straight through those okay and then we're going to flip our ring backwards so that the end then feeds through the previous colored rings okay now if you find see that that seems to be locking up a little bit there if that happens all you need to do is go down here wiggle these rings around a little bit so that they sit flat and you'll find that then that loosens this ring up for you and you can come in and easily close it okay and this is what our work looks like so far and then once you've got that you pick up another of your colored one rings and we want to feed through this pre this last pair of our color one rings that are here in our weave okay so we don't want to go through the color two rings we want to go through the bright aluminium so we go through one on that side and then flipping our work over we want to put one here on this side as well okay and then we add another pair of color one rings to our chain 
just going straight through the last pair. Okay. One more. So we're always wanting to be working in pairs with this weave. Okay, so so far we've got, we've added four rings. We've added two pairs of our color one. And now we want to add a color two ring to our chain. Okay. got a pair of color two all right so our work currently looks like this now I'm just going to open up color one ring in preparation and again we're going to do what we did before we're going to take this pair of color two rings and we're going to push them so that they snuggle in with this pair of color one rings back here the pair that are facing us Okay, and again, you can see we've formed that eye just there and taking up a new color one ring, we go through that eye, making sure we pick up all four of our rings. Now, this is fiddly. So if you don't get it straight away and it's even more fiddly, the smaller the gauge. So just make sure that you go through all four of those rings. It's very important that you pick them all up. And then we're going to flip our ring backwards so that it goes through the previous color two ring in our weave. Okay, so just straight through the middle of that one and we're going to close that up. Okay, so that's the ring that we just placed there. And we're going to flip our work over so we get the other side there. And taking up a new color one ring, open that up. And we want to go through the same eye, okay, where they all overlap. So straight through there, making sure we pick up all four of those rings, okay? And then once we have a fall of those, we flip our ring backwards so that the leading edge can now go through our previous pair of color two rings. We just want to go straight through the middle and then we want to do that up. Okay. And our work looks like that. So that's it guys. We just keep repeating those steps. So taking up a color one ring, we put one on that side of our color two rings. We put another one and we just keep building that chain up so that we've got two pairs of, or two sets of colored one rings. So that's one. This will be our second set. Okay. And then once we've got two sets of our BA rings or our colored one rings in place, we add our final pair of colored two rings. Okay. So our work looks like this. Okay. And then getting one of these rings prepped in advance because it helps to have this one opened because you've got to try and fold this ring back so that it sits in between that pair of color one rings, okay? So fold it back so it sits in there and that it forms this eye here where they all overlap through that eye to where we're going to put our new ring straight through there, making sure we pick up all four of our rings and then once we've done that we sort of flip our ring backwards and we bring it through our previous pair of color two rings okay and close it up okay 
so there's the ring there that we just placed we want to put one on the other side so we flip our work over we take up an opened color one ring again we're looking for the eye that's formed where all four of our rings overlap we go through all four of those rings make sure we get all four of them and that we're sitting on top of those rings there in the middle once we've done that we flip our ring backwards so we can feed it through the green ring so again you can see here that this is tight it's it's not sitting properly if that happens hold that ring in place that you've just started feeding through and while you're doing that give this ring here a bit of a wriggle make sure these rings are sitting properly once they are you'll find it much easier to close this ring up okay and that's it guys you just keep repeating those steps until you've reached the length that you require now to do the orbiting version what you need to do then i'll show you here but i will only be able to put one of these rings in because like i said um, the 9.5 millimeter id rings doesn't work as well for the orbiting version i prefer to use 10 mil but once you've reached the length that you need and if you are going to put the orbiting rings in you'll probably need to go you know a little bit longer maybe one or two extra units longer because it does scooch it up a little bit but you'll be able to see that as you're going along so once you've completed it to the length that you need it to be and you want to add your orbiting rings okay then what you need to do is you want to come back to the beginning and you're looking for this second unit here okay this one with the rings on the outside all right so we want to sort of flatten that a little bit and we're going to simply just feed our ring straight through there now i don't have any elegant way of doing it i just sort of push it through and then once it's through where i need it to be i'm just going to close that up and that's what it looks like so as I said I'm not going to try and fit the second ring in it is difficult and it also makes for a very rigid um, piece of mail at this size so if you're looking for perhaps uh, something to use for a keychain a short piece of this made in this smaller size with the orbiting rings especially if you can get that second orbiting ring in and you can do it it's just you know it's tricky that makes a really good uh nice stiff piece of chain mail for a keychain something like that but if you want to actually be able to wear it i suggest going up to um a half a centimeter ring id so this is 9.5 i suggest going up to a 10 okay and that will make it much more fluid and easier to wear as a bracelet so just to show you again with the examples that i've got the two sizes in this is a 16 gauge awg the standard weave is in 9 30 seconds of an inch which is about 7.1 mils okay and that makes a lovely weave of that size but to do the orbiting i went up to 7.5 millimeters okay and um so that works out much better so instead of seven mils id sorry um 7.5 millimeters i hope i've been clear with that I, I think i'm i hope i haven't confused you so go up 0.5 of a mil in your id size seven mils for the normal 7.5 for the orbiting in the 14 gauge 9.5 for the normal 10 for the orbiting 18 gauge it's uh, 5.75 for the normal 6.25 for the orbiting and in the 20 gauge 4.5 for the normal and 5 mil id for the orbiting one 
Okay, so hopefully I haven't confused you too much there, guys. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's the tutorial today. I hope you found it useful and you were able to follow along. If you've got any questions or comments or any weave suggestions that you'd like to see us demonstrate, drop us a comment down below in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up here if you enjoyed our video. Share our video with um, your groups and things. We'd uh, love to get the word out. And if you'd like to help us create more content in the future and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell icon to make sure that you get all the notifications every time we upload some new content. And while you're here, don't forget to check out our many, many other tutorial videos that we have here for you. And last but certainly not least, check out our shop. There you'll find all the tools and components and everything that you will need to make these tutorial and many others. All right, guys, thanks again for popping in. And I hope to see you again sometime in the very near future. Bye.